tonight we're going to use the Under My Umbrella and the Pretty Parasols stamp set. And I know my camera's really close to my desk tonight. I was having a bit of trouble with my lighting. Um, and this is the only way I could get it to work. And then we have the Umbrella Punch. Okay, so first I want to show you just a little bit about what some of my ladies did over the weekend when they came to my house for a stamp a stack. So what we did was we stamped with the umbrella onto designer series paper and here we're using the hydrangea paper and then we simply used the punch and punched those out like that and then we even stamped on the other side of our hydrangea papers and punched those out and got that kind of a look so that's an easy way to do paper piecing because you've got a punch and you get the the nice detail of the printed paper but you still have that stamped outline and then you'd end up with something that looks like this when you uh, put the handle of the umbrella on and i showed you last week let me just find it in my stash this little cute little card using the stitched with whimsy dies that so you can take just a simple cute little punched image and uh, paper piece image and make just a simple little gift card and you've got the detail of those cute stamps so i'll show you as we're going what they did over the weekend so first they did a couple of these which i th i think these are just so cute i think umbrellas are nice and happy and fun and we've used the hydrangea papers here and then inside we did the little boots and the umbrella and then they also did oops one of these and this is using the ornate garden papers and i think this one is equally as cool i i probably wouldn't have picked these colors but seeing it all together like this i i actually really like that it's nice and happy and again you'll notice that the prints are very small prints okay now um, when one of the ladies was working she made a comment um, that she was going to stamp the boots and make something for some framed art at her house and I thought it was such an adorable idea because those little gum boots or rain boots as I would call them um, or galoshes I think as some people call them in this under my umbrella stamp set I think they're adorable so I've stamped them here on, um, I believe this is Daffodil Delight, the printed papers. And you'll see that it's a polka dot and it's just, so it's again, just a small print. And I'm using my black Stampin' Blend marker and just coloring in the top and bottom just to give that a little bit of detail. And now there isn't a punch for the boots. And often there, is, there aren't punches or dies for images, especially when you want to do the paper piecing. Or if you want to do like a portion of an image, uh, there wouldn't be a particular die or punch. So we're just going to use our scissors. We'll go back to the old fashioned way. And these are quite easy to cut out, these little um, gum boots. Now some people like to cut right on the line. I like to give it just a little bit of a, a border because then you've got a little more room for error. If you're right on the line, then you've got to be quite exact. So it's up to you. Now then, uh, before we did the video, I actually did a whole lot more of these. So you see that we've got a rainbow of gum boots, which that looks so happy and fantastic as is. But I've only got room on my card for six. So one of these is going to have to be the odd man out and not go on there and for some reason i cannot see comments um like they're just not there i've scrolled down a few times so i would ask you which one you would want to take out but i think i'm going to make a decision because we've got i'm gonna um take that one out and we'll put this one on the inside of our card okay so let's slide those up a little bit now then i've created a card front here that is I should have written it down. It is um, seven and five eighths by two and five eighths. And hopefully you can see that. I've actually embossed on this. 
and I've used that the folder that went with the Forever Greenery I, I, you can't really see that with the Forever Greenery suite and um, this one is staying around so I've just done it here up in the corner I think you can see that just we'll just see what that looks like I'm always experimenting all right I think actually I'm going to stamp my words first just in case I need to start over. Now I'm going to choose the words from the coordinating set, the Pretty Parasols, because I like that it had these long words, which is nice um, when you have a, a long card. So I'm going to stamp Wishing You Warmth and Sunshine. Okay, like that. And... And then now I'm going to use my, actually I'm not, I'm going to grab my Smoky Slate blend and I'm just first going to create a little something for those boots to sit on. And this is one of those things that the more you think about it, the harder it is. Just kind of make, make some lines here, just a little thing for them to sit on. And a lot of it's going to get covered, so don't worry too much about that. And if you want to, you can always go back in with your color lifter and kind of blend the edge. This color lifter is definitely a must if you use Stampin' Blends. Okay, so now I'm just going to check and make sure that I'm going to have enough room. I think just barely I'm going to make this side just that little bit longer. I probably drive some people crazy. I'm not very exact with my measuring. So what I'll do is put the two end ones on first. And actually this is what I got the ruler for. So it, it's really helpful to have a clear ruler in your stash just so that the boots are lined up because I could see that it would be quite easy to end up on a slant by the time you're done. Okay, and let's put then the purple ones down here and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball where those will go so they'll be about even. So if you just choose colors that are all in the brights family, then you will have a really great rainbow or choose ones that are all in the subtles family, which I'll show you in just a moment. I did do a subtles version. Okay, happy with that. And, and then let's go ahead and put that on our card base, which my card base is eight inches by six inches, which I then folded in half. Okay, and then my black would be seven and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. And then I gave you the white one. I actually really like that with the embossing folder. So like I was saying, this um, friend who was at my uh, house this weekend for the stampa stack was saying she was going to make a long line of these gum boots and have them in her entryway in a frame which I thought was really quite a nice idea something to put in your house um, very cute and happy it would also look really cute in a child's room I would say all right then from there I thought we would do some black and white twine which this is from the playful pets sweet and I I really like it I find that I actually use this twine quite a bit and let's just cut that off there and I didn't get my glue dots over here so we'll just use a bit of Tombow um, Tombow works fine for twine you just need to give it a few minutes to actually dry whereas a glue dot is immediate so either works you just have to work with its properties and then I thought we'll add some of these matte black dots. And now these black dots are really good. I found that before we had them, I was coloring a lot of my pearls in black and stuff. That's still not dry. So it's really great to have these. And I'll do large ones and then small ones. And um, I find you either have them on the boots or in between the boots, but not kind of both. Okay, and then maybe I'll do one high and then one kind of low again. There we go. And I like that because then it kind of, kind of visually connects them. And then we've got our twine. And I'm going to set that aside. 
and I'll show you the other one that I did. This one is in more subtle colors. And this one, I didn't use all the same prints. So this one, I've got them all polka dots, which I think does look cute. But this one, I didn't really have that option because we're kind of dealing with scraps at this point while things are discontinuing and we don't have a lot of the new stuff yet. So I just use various things from various packs. And that actually looks cute too, I think. And then inside the card, I just had some umbrellas left over. So I just put an umbrella, um, put the little gray there to ground it and stamp some more of the words. So on this one that we just did, I'll put in here instead of an umbrella, because it's not the right color, I'll put the little um, gum boots and then stamp some words there too. So, um, I'm just going to show you another sample, but basically before I do, I'm just going to uh, summarize that you need to have a papers with a small print or one where if it was a small piece, you could tell what it was. It wasn't it. Um, and then you need to have stamps that are quite open in my opinion. So ones like this where you've got the outline, but it's otherwise quite open. I'm just going to grab these or you could go to like these ones with the people. This is the beautiful moments one where you'd stamp the young girls and then you could paper piece the dress out of a piece of paper rather than using your blends or watercolors or coloring in any, in any other way. You would just stamp it on a piece of paper and cut that out and fit it over top. Which is just a really great way to use up your little bits and pieces because I know we all end up with tiny pieces. And to do, for example, these gumboots, you only need like a one and a half by one and a half inch piece. And then the last sample I'll show you, I've kind of mixed them all in tonight. This one I did a video on about a month ago and it's using the same set, but I've used the hydrangea papers here and then just some of those designer series prints and the gumboots and the umbrellas again and then just did more of a technique background. But it's just a nice way to make your umbrellas and your boots and your other images, like I mentioned, interesting without the coloring um, and using up your scraps of paper. All right, so if you have any questions or comments or have a sample of your own that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. And be sure and check out the links that I've put underneath this video. And thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you next week, Thursday at 7. Bye-bye.